good morning. I'd like to welcome you as we gather and as we worship together as the uh, family of faith. It's good to see you today. Glad that you have chosen to worship alongside of us today. If you are a visitor today, if you're a guest, we want to offer you a very warm Derbyshire welcome. We're glad that, that you've chosen to worship with us today. Uh, you will find the guest card in the pew rack in front of you. And if you wouldn't mind just taking it out and, and uh, sharing with us your information, we look forward to uh, finding out how we can best serve you, how we can best minister to you. Uh, and if you just drop your information in the offering plate when it's passed uh, during the service, we'd appreciate it. As we do begin worship, you'll notice that we do have uh, a lot of things going on in the life of the church. Just want to highlight a few things for you. Want to remind you that today we're uh, kicking off our spring M&M camp, our children's music and missions camp. It'll run through um, May 5th and we'll uh, meet uh, on Sunday afternoon from 4 until 5.30. And uh, if you have not signed up already, that's fine. We look forward to you coming and joining us this evening. We're going to have a great time and a great opportunity for us to share uh, music and also missions, uh, the love of, of uh, God with our children. So hopefully you can come and be a part of that. Also this week, this Wednesday, we'll have our uh, fellowship supper. Uh, this Wednesday at uh, 5.30, we're going to be having a pot roast and uh, veggies and salad and most importantly we're going to have some dessert too and hope that you'll come and join us for a time of fellowship around the table we do ask you to uh, sign up you can sign up by calling the church office or go online and uh, sign up on the sign up genius so we have uh, a sense of how many folks to that are coming so we make sure we have enough food for everybody. So we look forward to seeing you this Wednesday. Also following Wednesday dinner, we're going to have an info session for our uh, New York mission trip this summer. If you are interested, if you'd like to know what's going to be happening this summer, if you want to support the mission trip, either by going on it or um, uh, financially, we would love for you to come at 6.30 on Wednesday after dinner uh, for a time of information so you can uh, hear what's happening to ask your questions so that you can be fully informed on our New York mission trip this summer. Also, we are uh, excited as we are planning and preparing our, uh, our uh, first uh, Derbyshire dinner and variety show. Uh, this is going to um, feature you. And so if you have a talent that you would like to share, if you don't have a talent and still would like to share it, uh, we'd love for you to come and uh, be a part of that. You can, uh, we're gonna have a dinner, tickets are $10, and we're gonna be entertained by you. And we're gonna have a great time of fellowship and, and fun, and that's gonna be on May 4th. And all the proceeds will go to uh, help support our Rise Against Hunger event, which is gonna be on June 1st. And uh, we are looking forward to the opportunity to help nourish our neighbors through our Rise Against Hunger event June 1st. And that's what we're doing, raising money for that. And we'd love for you to be a part of it. Uh, so if you have some more information, if you'd like to uh, sign up, you can talk with uh, Stephen or Alice. And they'll be happy to give you some more information about that. A lot of things going on. Do be in prayer for our church, for our ministries, for our community as we continue to serve them and serve God. Let's prepare our hearts and our minds now and let's worship together. Will you join me in the call to worship found in your bulletins? Though we have known hardship and pain, though life has not always turned out as we had hoped, we will stand here and say, God's steadfast love endures forever. Though life becomes more complex, the deepest questions remain unanswered, and the mystery of faith deepens, we will say, God's steadfast love endures forever. And though the pain of the world often seems more than we can bear or address, we will stand firm in our faith and say, God's steadfast love endures forever. Amen.
Lord, we come to you this morning, and we do love you. We love you because you are our creator, not only of us, but of this planet, of this universe, of this beautiful world that we live in, and of all people. Lord, we love you because of who you are, because you are love. We remember that your steadfast love endures forever, God. And we remember how your son came to be among us, that he did die on the cross, but then he rose again. And we love that too, Lord. Thank you for all you have done for us. Thank you for all you continue to do for us today. And thank you for what you will do in our future. We ask that we might feel that steadfast love even more powerfully this morning as we continue in worship and as we lift our praises to you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good to see you today. Remember last Sunday we celebrated Easter and we talked about how Jesus is alive again. So we're going to review that a little bit today and talk about what happened next. And this is from the Bible. This is from John chapter 20. Two days after Jesus died, Mary and several other women went to the tomb where he had been buried. They were shocked to see that the stone that had covered the opening had been rolled away. They looked inside, and Jesus' body was gone. Two angels in dazzling clothes said, Why are you looking for Jesus here? Jesus is alive. Go tell the others. The women rushed to tell the disciples. At first, no one believed them. That would be hard to believe, wouldn't it? Yeah. A little while later, the disciples, or Jesus' friends, gathered to talk about what had happened. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there right in front of them. Peace be with you, Jesus said. The disciples were so frightened that they clutched each other and trembled. But Jesus said, 
don't be afraid, it's me. Look, look at my hands and feet. But the disciples still could not believe that Jesus was alive. Give me a piece of fish, said Jesus. He took the fish and ate it, and his followers were convinced. Jesus really is alive, and he was with them again. They were so happy that they laughed and clapped their hands in joy. So after Jesus rose from the dead, the women went and they told the others, they told the disciples or Jesus' helpers that he was alive. And it was really hard for them to believe, wasn't it? But after they saw Jesus and they talked to him, they did believe. And after that, they went out and they told other people about what had happened with Jesus and how he was really God's son and he had really been raised from the dead and that he was alive again. And today, earlier, we celebrated our special teachers, our Sunday school teachers, and they do the same thing. They go and they tell you all about Jesus and about um, how he is our Savior and about how he is God's Son and what a miracle he is. And that's what we're supposed to do, too. We're supposed to go tell other people, just like the women in the story in the Bible and just like the disciples did. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so, so much for our teachers and for being an example for us to tell others about you and to share your love. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord, we come to you with grateful hearts for all that you have given us. We pray that we will keep the joy of giving in our hearts, and these offerings will bless those that receive them. Amen. lesson this morning comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. Ezekiel, chapter 2, can be found on page 673 in your pew Bible, if you'd like to follow along. Hear these words, Ezekiel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. He said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them. And you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. And you, O mortal, do not be afraid of them, and do not be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns surround you, and you live among scorpions. Do not be afraid of their words. Do not be dismayed at their looks, for they are a rebellious house. You shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are 
a rebellious house. But you, mortal, hear what I say to you. Do not be rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? God, it sometimes feels like we are surrounded by the conflicting voices of men being touted as prophets, voices passionate and certain, voices that condemn and voices that foretell, voices that nurture hope and voices that stoke fear. At some point, it all just becomes noise. So grant us wisdom, God, to turn down the volume. Maybe even turn it off completely that we might listen in earnest for your voice. Let us listen for your truth in our neighbors and in creation, in music and in art. Help us look for your movement in our own experiences and in listening to the stories of others because truly you are present, working, moving, speaking, prophesying in all these ways and more. Help us to see, help us to listen without fear that we might respond with curiosity, with a sense of wonder that draws us closer to you and the truth of your love. We pray these things through your son, Jesus, who taught us to listen and to love, and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. For me it was in the garden He prayed, not my will but thine He had no tears for his own griefs But sweat drops of blood for mine took my sins 
pains and my sorrows. He made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died for me. I'd like to invite you to turn with me to our scripture lesson today. It comes from the book of Acts. In the first chapter, verses 1 through 8. You know, there are some days that are just spectacular. They just seem to be a little bit better than other days. And typically those spectacular days, they stick with you and they, they undergird you and they, and they help you and they linger. And we long to regain those good feelings again. I think last Sunday was one of those days. We gathered here with our families to worship with our church family. And the music was inspiring. We sang, Christ the Lord is risen today. The flowers were beautiful. The sacred moments of worship were, were moving. And for me, for me, I left out after Easter worship and, and I was just kind of floating. I mean, it was a high, holy day and it was spectacular. But as grand as it was, Monday came too quickly. And we had to go back to work, didn't we? To school, to the normal, ordinary routine. We put away the trappings of Easter, the, the white draped cross. We took it down and we stored it until, well, next year. The flowers that adorned our sanctuary, 
I mean, y'all took them. <laughs> Any outward evidence that anything spectacular happened here, well, it's been removed. And life is just getting back to normal. But shouldn't our lives look different because of Easter? I mean, the celebration of Jesus' resurrection, it's the very linchpin of our entire faith. The fact that Jesus, God's son, defeated death proves that there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God, not even death itself. I mean, so shouldn't, shouldn't life look different because of Easter? And so I wonder, now that Easter is in the rearview mirror, what now? I mean, what's, what's next? Is there more to Easter than just an event to celebrate? Does Jesus' resurrection have an impact on how we live, or is it simply a, a momentary pause? on Easter Sunday where we give a cursory nod to the empty tomb. If Easter is the linchpin of our faith, how should we then live? What is different in light of the good news that Jesus is alive, that he's loose, I suspect that these are probably some of the questions that the disciples wrestled with too. I mean, think about it. Their understanding of the world, their understanding of God, their understanding of who and what the Messiah is has been turned upside down in one fell swoop. I mean, they just watched Jesus die on the cross a couple days ago. And now he, he's alive and he's standing right there with them. I mean, how do you come to grips with something like that? I mean, even the disciples were confused. Some doubted. What do we do now that Jesus is alive? I mean, what's next? They had no idea what to do. So as they're trying to process all of of what they had experienced because of Jesus' resurrection, as they tried to to figure out how the Easter experience was going to change their lives, Jesus comes along and he gives them some instructions. So listen this morning to what Jesus told them about what was coming next. Here in the book of Acts, chapter 1, starting with verse 1. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you've heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the very ends of the earth. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You pray with me. Father, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. 
Amen. So what's next? Wait. Jesus said, wait. I mean, after all the practical training that these disciples had received over the last three years of being Jesus' apprentices, Jesus said, okay, this is what I want you all to do. I just want you to wait here in Jerusalem. You see, you're not quite ready yet to go out on your own. I mean, by this point, the disciples had been sitting around with Jesus at countless campfires. They'd walk through just about every city in Jerusalem, Judea, uh, Judea, Israel, and Samaria. They'd encounter how knows, who knows how many people meeting their needs, fielding their questions, loving and caring for each one they met. I mean, they met, they, they witnessed the power of God as Jesus healed the sick and and banished the demons and controlled the storms. They knew Jesus' favorite food. They knew Jesus' jokes. They knew Jesus' go-to hangout spots. But still, after all of that, apparently Jesus knew that they still needed something more. And see, what they needed was the Holy Spirit. Just wait here, Jesus said. You receive power when the Holy Spirit comes. What's coming? The holy, the holy what? See, we don't typically spend a whole lot of time talking about the Holy Spirit. Maybe because we don't really have a very good understanding of who or what the Holy Spirit is. Maybe we've gotten turned off by the mere mention of the Holy Spirit because, you know, there are some religious fanatics out there who claim that they have the the, the power of the Holy Spirit and they show off the depth of their spiritual acumen by by talking in tongues or something like that. And, And they make the rest of us feel like, well, we're kind of inadequate in our faith because we don't really understand all that. But no matter the reason, it's easy for us just to kind of skim over the mention of the Holy Spirit. But the reality is this. The Holy Spirit is God's gift to us. And I think of it like this. The Holy Spirit is is that part of God that lives within us. The Holy Spirit is is our heaven-sent helper, our champion, our advocate, our guide. And he comforts us and he directs us and he lives with us. He's at work daily molding and shaping us as as we attempt, as we strive to follow after God. He's the executor of God's will here on earth. The Holy Spirit comes and he infuses us with power. I mean, that was Jesus' promise. The Holy Spirit is coming with power. I mean, that's, that's what Ezekiel experienced as Alice read for us in our Old Testament lesson. I mean, did, did you hear it? When God called him to be a prophet, he said, don't be afraid, Ezekiel. And the power of the Holy Spirit came into him and raised him to his feet so he could hear God. Wait, Jesus said. The Holy Spirit is coming with power. Power? I mean, what kind of power? Well, I think he comes bringing us the power to make good choices. I could use that kind of power. I don't know about you. I could make some good choices. I need to make good choices. He comes bringing the power to keep our promises. Bringing the power to to stand by our commitments. 
He comes bringing the power to still, to quiet the voices of fear or doubt that threaten to derail us from our faith. He comes bringing the power just to get out of bed in the morning so we can keep following because so often we don't feel like doing that. To remain faithful when it's easier just to give up. The Holy Spirit, he comes in power and he strengthens us. He he gives us the ability to face the unexpected. This is what Jesus promised to those very first disciples on those first couple of days after Easter. Do you want to know what's next? I'm sending you the Holy Spirit to help you, to give you power. And see, this is what Jesus still promises us today. So let me ask you, how's your power level these days? I mean, could you use an infusion of strength so that you can meet each day with courage, with faith? I mean, do you feel like you're bearing all the the worries of life on your own? Do do you find that that you have this emptiness, this like something's missing? Do you long to experience a sense of peace? If so, I'd like to invite you to tap into Jesus' promise so we can experience, too, the Holy Spirit. And so to that end, I'd like to spend the next couple of weeks exploring who the Holy Spirit is, what the Holy Spirit is all about, so we can get to know him better and, and nurture our relationship with the Spirit. I mean, do you realize that that Jesus says more about the Spirit than he does about the church? He says more about the Spirit than he does about, about finances or marriage or the future. In Scripture, it's filled with with all sorts of different metaphors describing for us who the Spirit is and, and what the Spirit does. And see, when we begin to look at it, we begin to discover that there's there's not just one way to experience the Spirit. There's not just one way to describe all that the Spirit encompasses. He meets us where we are in our own unique situations and infuses power what we need, when we need it. You see, the the Spirit is not just the ultimate teacher and guide, but, but the Spirit is also our intercessor who speaks for us when we don't know how to pray or what to pray or even to pray. The Spirit is it's like the wind, Jesus said. We don't know where it comes from. We don't know where it goes. It just is here. The Spirit is the dove of peace, lighting on Jesus' shoulder at his baptism. The gift of the Spirit. He's the gift giver who, who equips us with the, the, the gifts of the Spirit of love and joy and peace and kindness. Endurance. He's the river of living water to refresh us. I mean, the list goes on. And so my hope is as we we focus in on who the Spirit is and how the Spirit works in these coming weeks, I hope we'll discover the power of the Spirit in our own lives. And so whether this is a refresher for you, whether this is your first encounter with with the Holy Spirit, I mean, it really doesn't matter because you see what God wants is for us to experience his presence and his power through the Holy Spirit. But so often, so often I think we just, we miss it. Several weeks ago, I was handed a coupon for a free sandwich at Wawa. Now, I've never really thought about stopping at Wawa and having a sandwich, but the picture on the coupon of that sandwich looked pretty enticing, so I said, hey, I'm giving this a shot. It was free after all. So several days later, as the gas gauge on my 
uh, truck went to empty, I, I figured I'd kill two birds with one stone. I'd fill up the truck and I'd fill up my stomach. So I headed to Wawa, parked at the gas tank, scanned my credit card, mashed the unleaded button and stuck the nozzle in the truck as I scurried into Wawa and made my order. Grab some chips and a drink and here's my free sandwich. I was pretty pumped. Coming out with a, a free lunch, jumped in the truck, drove off, and I wasn't a mile down the road. When I looked at my gas tank, and it's still empty, I said, what in the world? And so I looked at the, the receipt it said, no sale. I said, what? Apparently, I stuck the nozzle in, and you know sometimes you squeeze the nozzle and it instantly turns off? I left out of Wawa with no gas. I parked right next to the pump, stuck the nozzle in the tank. I did everything except the most important thing, getting gas. I did have a sandwich. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if we do a similar thing in faith. I mean, we go through the motions of religion. Oh, we show up to worship. Maybe we'll participate in a mission project. We, we may mouth the words of the hymn. But do we leave the Easter moment too quickly? Do we figure, well, I can handle this one on my own? Do we neglect to tap into the power of the Spirit and forget the most important thing? What I want us to know is that Jesus has given us, he's given you a gift. The Spirit of God wants to come and live in you to inspire you, to encourage you, to, to, to infuse power within you. And if we allow him to, he will guide us daily. He'll teach us. He'll energize us. And so during this season of Eastertide, in these next couple of weeks, I hope you'll join me so that we can discover the help the power that God wants to give us because the Spirit, Jesus said, he's coming with power. Pray with me. Lord, open our hearts and our minds And help us to welcome your spirit in our lives. Teach us, Lord. Help us be open to your power to guide us in these days. Lord, give us wisdom so we can make good decisions. And give us courage to face the uncertainty of tomorrow as you instill in us those gifts of the Spirit of kindness and goodness and endurance and love. May we, Lord, may we wait on your Spirit to infuse us with your power. Amen. Our hymn of invitation is, is found in your hymn book. We'll be singing him 620, because he lives. And as we stand and as we sing, I invite you to listen to where the Spirit is speaking into your life. And maybe, maybe you've never listened before. And maybe the Lord is inviting you to come, follow me. Maybe the Lord's inviting you to come and, and become part of the family of faith here at Derbyshire. We would love to welcome you to join us as our, in our journey of faith. I'll be standing down front and be happy to talk with you, to pray with you. Won't you stand with me as we sing together?
seated for just a moment. At this time, we come to our Lord's table, table of love and forgiveness, a table where you are invited to come and to be reminded that God is here for you, a table that you're invited to, whether you're a member of this church or not. For you see, this is the Lord's table that he has prepared just for you. And so I invite you to commune alongside of us as we call ourselves to the table. Would you read responsively with me? We have gathered here in worship, and now we come to the Lord's table. We discover that our differences are more than just something we tolerate, but that our differences are a blessing. So come, children of God, just as you are. Wherever you are on this journey of life, you're welcome here in this place, in this community, at this table. Amen.
I'd like to invite you to prepare your bread. We read that the night Jesus was betrayed, he had dinner with his friends, and it was while he was having dinner that Jesus took the bread and he blessed it. You pray with me. Father, as we hold this bread in our hands, we're reminded that you are the bread of life, that you come offering us sustenance. And Lord, we're reminded that it's in your brokenness that we are made whole. So Lord, we come to the table looking for life and wholeness and sustenance. May you meet us here. Amen. And then Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body which has been broken for you. So take it and eat it. Would you prepare your cup as well? In the same way that Jesus took the bread, he took the cup. He blessed it too. Pray with me. Lord, as we hold this cup in our hand, we remember your promise that your spirit is coming in power. May we experience the power of your love. May we experience the power to face tomorrow because we have spent time in your presence today. Amen. The Lord said, this is my blood which has been shed for you. It's a new covenant for the forgiveness of your sin. So take it and drink it. As is our tradition here at Derbyshire, during uh, communion, we take up a love offering. Uh, you're invited to give as the Lord leads you. Know that the monies to this offering go to help defray the cost of those who are in financial distress. So you're invited to give as the Lord leads you. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, Jesus said, do it in remembrance of me. Then we read that after the singing of a hymn, they went out. 
But before we do that, we have a bit of family business to take care of, and I'm excited that we do. Miss Karen? Some of you will remember Karen, Noel and Kay's daughter, and she has been a member of this church two other times. But life has taken her away to other churches and down south in South Carolina, but life has brought her back. And she says she wants to reunite with her church family all over again. And we are gonna receive a blessing from her presence. If you do not know her yet, I invite you to come and get to know her. Um, and uh, if you will promise to be in prayer for Karen as she joins us in our journey of faith, and if you'll just affirm her decision to, to join the Derbyshire family, won't you say, God bless you. God bless you. We're glad that Karen is one of us again. Following the service, I invite you to come and greet her and welcome her and hug her around the neck and welcome her home. Let's stand as we sing together, Blessed Be the Tide.